calculated the value, I need to stuff that value into my label. Right? So I will go in and LBL tip is where I want to put it. Dot text. Remember that label is again, it's an object. It has a bunch of properties. Which one are we interested in? We're interested in the text of that label. Equals DBL tip. Squiggly line again. Why? Exact opposite problem. We're taking a double and we're trying to uh, put it into a, um, a string. Almost every object has a toString method. That will simply take it and make a string version of it. So now we're, we're all set. All right. Let's run this. All right. Let's keep our life easy and say we are high rollers and have a $100 bill. All right. With poor service, the tip is zero. With average service, the tip is $15. With excellent service, the tip is $20. So we got that to work. Now to be sure we could do some formatting and, and that two string allows us to format that and all that, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm also going to get rid of what happens when we initially load this where it says um, calculated amount. I'm going to blank that out. first time. Good for me. All right. Um, when I started writing programs, Jimmy Carter was the president of the United States. Okay. So I can whip through some of these simple things pretty easy. All right. What happens if something goes wrong? All right. How do you figure out? I'll tell you what not to do first. Let's say you know what, I'm going to turn off the screen for a second. I'm going to sabotage my code but not let you see what I did. you get a compiler if you use a single equal sign. So hint, hint, that isn't what the problem is. Okay. Let's turn the screen back on. These projectors don't like when you turn them off and turn them back on immediately. It's mad at me, I can tell. I'm seeing little flickers. It decided it can't stay mad at me. That's good. All right. So let's enter in a bill of $100. And 
I'll go and click calculate for this. Ooh, it told me my tip amount is $20 for average service. Ooh, something ain't right. All right. So what do you do? Here's what people typically do. I'll make I'll make it the, the screen smaller deliberately. Not that small. Typically people go like this. <laughs> All right, and do this for a long time. And then maybe they start like, ooh, maybe this isn't the right statement. And we'll try changing that. And it might fix it, it might not. If it fixes it, they're happy and they go home. The odds are overwhelming, and the odds are definitely in this case, if you do anything to this instruction, it's not going to fix it. It's just going to break it worse. So people undo it except for the times that they forget to undo it. So now they've introduced a second bug into their code, perhaps. All right? The point is, is a lot of people do the old shot in the dark pro, uh, debugging tool, where something's wrong, oh, let's just start changing stuff. All right? And let's see what works. All right? Now, I'll confess, you know, I'm saying this facetiously, but every programmer does it once in a while. All right. The best programmer in the world, whoever that would happen to be, uh, probably does that once in a while. But the better programmers don't do it very often. The better programmers take a systematic approach to debugging their code. What is the systematic approach of debugging the code? There's a built-in debugger in ASP.NET. You can actually, the, and the debugger goes in and actually lets you see the lines of code as they're executing. So you can see where things sort of go south and when things stop, stop working, all right? You know, consider this to be like an x-ray machine or a CAT scan for your program, you know? If you come in and you say, my finger hurts, doctor, look at it, stare at it, yeah, you know? Unless the bone's poking through, they probably don't have an idea what's wrong with it, right? So what do they do? They do a CAT scan, they do an x-ray, whatever. They actually look in, into it, see what's going on on the inside. We want to do the same thing here, and the debugger will allow us to do that. What we can do in our code is we can set breakpoints. In other words, we can set like a little alert that when the program hits this line, that's what that little red dot means, jump into debug mode, go into and show me the lines of code as they execute. So I can see what, what went wrong. Now again, the idea of a breakpoint is you want to x-ray the part of the body that's injured, right? If, for example, I came in because my finger hurt, they're not going to do a full body scan. You know, it's not worth their time, all right, to do that. They're just going to look at the one area. So generally speaking, you have an idea probably of where it's going wrong. Hey, when I click the button, I don't get the right results. Okay, well, I'm going to put my breakpoint in the button click event. Seems pretty logical, right? So we do that. Now, watch what happens when we run this. How did you get the red dot there? You click right over here in the margin to turn it on or turn it off. So I go and run this. All right. I go in and I put in data. I click calculate. And what happens is, now the x-ray's starting. Now I'm seeing the guts of the code. It's showing me that the web server is executing this line of code. All right? And I can do some things, like, for example, I can put my mouse over some things to see the values. So if I put my mouse over this, it shows me, it might be a little hard to read, but it shows me that the value of that is A, which is what I'd expect it to be, right? If, for example, I created my drop-down wrong, and the value of the drop-down was like uh, V for average, or something like that, that might tell me what's wrong. I can step through the instructions one at a time. For today, we'll just talk about 
um, step into, which is F11. That will just take you through each line of code. So I'll hit F11. I'll hit F11, go to the next line of code. Notice that down here, and it's hard to see exactly what's showing, but it's showing you some of the values of variables. All right. F11 again. I can hover my mouse and I can say, well, double bill equals 100. That's right. STR level of service equals A. That's right. So I know those variables are getting populated correctly. So I know the problem isn't from here up. It's from here down. And what I can do is I can, again, hit F11. All right. I was on this line. Is the level of service equal to P? No. So it's not going to do this. It's going to do the else. Is the level of service equal to A? It should be, but it's not. Ooh. Why not? What is the level of service? Ah, it's uppercase A, and I'm testing for lowercase A. All right. Now, this is obviously something that I just, you know, obviously a very simple example. If you stared at this, you probably would have gotten it pretty quickly. But the systematic approach takes you through and, and, and you know, gives you a, a much better chance at solving it in particular when the code gets bigger and more complex and more involved. All right, this allows you to zoom right in. So almost always, all right, if you have a problem and you say something isn't working in lab, I will ask you, if, if, if it's a coding sort of issue, I'll ask you, show me how you've run it in debug. Have you run it in debug? All right, and if not, I'll say run it in debug and then we'll talk about it. So you'll run it and debug, and maybe the answer will jump out at you. If it doesn't, at least we'll take a systematic approach instead of just, you know, shooting at things. All right? It, it, it's um, great to have a systematic approach to anything that you do. All right? Um, you know, in, in the coding world, anyhow. Um, the idea is, is, again, sort of the, the shoot and, and look for problems in correcting it. What if, for example, I had two things wrong with my code, all right? I'm liable, and if I was just guessing at what to change, or eh, maybe this is the problem. If I change it and it doesn't impact it, because there's actually two things wrong, not one, I'm going to go and change it back, and then look for what's wrong when really I found part of the problem, right? This allows you to get in and really diagnose the problem um, completely. All right? Now, uh, we're going to end for today. Um, we'll go and add some of the other functionality next time. Then we'll look at how we can refactor this, how we can make this better. Because we're getting it to work, right? But that's just the starting point. Making it better is our goal. There is one last thing I wanted to say, so I lied. All right. We want to wrap this whole function in the if is valid. Just in case client side scripting was disabled and the validation controls ran on the server side. As a rule, any code that you have in your button click event should be wrapped in an if statement that says if is valid. If I forget that... Um, what are you checking you is valid? I'm checking to make sure that there's no validation <laughs> errors on the page. Remember, if I disable JavaScript, those controls, the validation controls that I put in, that required field validator and that compare validator, fire off both on the client and the server. We want them to fire off on the client, right? Because then the client gets an immediate error message and our server doesn't get hit with like bogus data, all right, that it can't possibly process. So we want that validation to take place on the client. But the client could have JavaScript disabled, all right? And that, if that's the case, then those controls fire off on the server side 
And we want to make sure, hey, if it's not valid, if those validation controls, any of them show an error and the page is not valid, we want to stop doing any further calculation. So that's the purpose of that statement. All right, questions? I'll post this example and the videos, and then we'll see you in lab.